So we are continuing our um, uh, class uh, with the history of philosophy. Uh, our uh, focus is um, uh, American philosophy, but uh, it is impossible to uh, consider uh, American philosophy without connection with European uh, philosophy. And uh, we will see um, that from the beginning, uh, when uh, United States or America as uh, a new country was constructed, was built, uh, uh, the founding fathers, the first generation of European immigrants, uh, enormously uh, influenced uh, way of thinking uh, the new inhabitants uh, when they became Americans. So this um, connection is extremely vivid and uh, each aspect of uh, philosophical thinking, which we discussed till now, also thanks to your uh, active, uh, vivid, and I would say even passionate uh, participation in the second part of our class through your questions, which um, I try to answer, um, and I will continue to, to do this. Um, and I uh, think that uh, in order to um, develop uh, a new aspect of uh, philosophical thinking and its connection with uh, politics, uh, the best way is to focus our attention not immediately on politics uh, in the US, although uh, probably uh, some of you attempted to do this. Uh, it's better sometimes to take a um, uh, longer uh, breath, uh, distance to current uh, uh, political debate and to look for some uh, uh, models, uh, precedents uh, in, the in the history of philosophy. And one of these um, models, uh, which uh, uh, very much influenced uh, the American way of thinking about uh, philosophy and its relationship to, to politics, is a um, Jewish thinker from Netherlands. Uh, Baruch Spinoza, and I would like to to dedicate uh, to him uh, my three films. The first will be uh, dedicated uh, to uh, his time, context in which uh, Spinoza um, was writing, was uh, developing his. Uh, extremely uh, influential ideas concerning uh, uh, exactly this relationship between uh, between philosophy and, and public life or political life. Uh, the second uh, film will be dedicated to one of his uh, treatises. As you remember, uh, uh, one of the models, a way to philosophize to, to, to make philosophy is to, to, to write treatise. And I already mentioned Spinoza as, as one example of this. But we will look at his treatise, um, a theological political treatise more closely to, to see uh, why uh, he was and still is so uh, relevant. Uh, and uh, in the third film, as Usually, uh, uh, I would like to focus on the consequences of uh, uh, these two previous films. So the first, as I said, Spinoza and his time, the second, uh, uh, a theological political treatise, and the third, what to uh, think about, or what consequences uh, this type of philosophy has uh, for our uh, political thinking or uh, philosophical thinking with um, a relationship to politics. So first of all, who was Spinoza? You can read everywhere uh, about him. I will send you uh, one book this time. 
and I think it is enough to, to read the introduction and, and perhaps a preface to, to this uh, treatise. Uh, and if you will have time and you will discover that this uh, book uh, written uh, in 17th century Amsterdam is appealing to you, although it was written in, in, in Latin, we have uh, English translation, also Polish translated in all possible languages. But in any way, I will, you can, you can uh, have a look at this book, which you will find on our platform. And uh, now I will give you this very small introduction to his time. So he was born in 1632 and passed away in 1677. So uh, his life was not very long, even uh, considering that in 17th century Europe, the people lived not so long as today. Uh, he died quite young, 45, 44 years old. Uh, probably tuberculosis was the cause of his uh, premature death. But uh, what is important that he, uh, in his uh, relatively short span of time, passed uh, through extremely um, tormented uh, uh, life decisions, so to say. So he was born in very traditional Jewish family, Sephardic Jewish family. His grandparents came from Portugal, from where um, at the end of uh, 15th century Jews were expelled. Uh, and they found a home in the Netherlands, a country which uh, were uh, in 16th, 17th century quite uh, welcoming of uh, everybody, but was tolerant. And they uh, settled in Amsterdam. If you have a chance to be there, you can see a very uh, big and beautiful building as a Portuguese synagogue. And it was exactly the place where young uh, Spinoza uh, used to go to pray and to study. And uh, in fact, he was a very good student. Uh, he was a student of um, Rabbi Saul Ben Morteira with whom he studied uh, Talmud, Torah, Jewish tradition, basically. So he knew uh, Portuguese, uh, Hebrew uh, and Dutch. Uh, he knew also other languages. We know that he was quite uh, talented in learning languages. Uh, he learned also Latin. And later on, uh, he wrote basically in Latin because it was the, the language of new scientific uh, communication between philosophers, theologians, scientists, etc., etc. But what happened, and it was quite unusual, that this young, uh, talented uh, Jew uh, ask questions which um, indicated uh, his uh, non-orthodox uh, uh, way of uh, thinking about uh, Jewish tradition. And it went so far that he was excluded from a Jewish community, excluded with a very strong uh, how to, well, in Hebrew is, is the term harem, means that you are excluded, you are considered heretic, someone who is not part of our community. And, uh, well, he accepted this verdict, uh, which had also a very uh, painful consequences for his life. He was forced also by uh, Christians to leave Amsterdam because um, uh, free thinking was not uh, accepted in this uh, tolerant country. 
it is very interesting that toler toleration had also its limits. It means that you have to be um, part of uh, one community, Jewish, Christian, but you have to be part of this community. If you are outsider, if you are excluded, if you are considered a heretic, you are considered um, dangerous for uh, others. Nevertheless, and this is very in the second uh, part, so to say, of uh, Spinoza's life, he found uh, uh, close friends um, between uh, people who thought uh, in a similar way, free thinkers. And one of them was um, Francis uh, van den Enden, uh, with whom he learned uh, Latin, uh, modern philosophy, particularly Descartes, or Cartesius, as we say in Polish. And through him, he entered in this um, modern, uh, centered on, on the subjectivity, on myself, way of thinking about philosophy. And uh, it was more or less uh, 60s, uh, 70s, when he became a close uh, friend of many uh, radical uh, reform uh, Protestants. Uh, and we can find also an interesting uh, connection uh, with Poland, because uh, Polish radical uh, uh, reformation groups, Socinians, or Polish brethren, were also expelled uh, from Poland, more, more or less in, in this time, when um, Spinoza was developing his uh, revolutionary ideas, uh, precisely 1658, and uh, they found place in, in Amsterdam, and there are some uh, letters uh, of Spinoza, exchange of letters, where he mentioned uh, Socinians, and he said that they are very reasonable Christians. And here is the, is the core of uh, Spinoza's uh, thinking. He was rational. He was uh, trying to apply logical, rational thinking to everything, also to, to religion. And uh, exactly uh, in this time, 16, um, 16, um, uh, 50s, 60s, uh, he started uh, to develop a close circle of students and also uh, he started to write a philosophical treatise. But he was uh, aware that he way, his way of thinking was uh, revolutionary for, for this time, that no everybody could accept it. And uh, this treatise, which we will uh, deal with uh, more closely in the second part um, of, of my introduction to, to Spinoza, he uh, expresses verbis clearly saying, it's not, my writing is not for everybody. Uh, is only for those who are able to use the mind, the reason. In your question, sometimes you ask this uh, uh, problem, how far philosophy is for everybody or only for few uh, elected or few uh, prepared to, to deal with philosophical questions. I would say that Spinoza was uh, more on the side of, of um, elitist way of thinking, and he was right, because uh, quite uh, immediately when his uh, treatise, uh, theological political treatise was published in 1670, he became uh, a celebrity of the time, but in a very negative way. You can imagine that even Catholic Church, although he was not Catholic, put his uh, it's on the index of prohibited books because it was considered as, as so dangerous. And uh, in his life, or, or more precisely after his uh, death, he published 
his most famous ethics, but we will not deal with ethics. We will focus our attention on the treatise, and uh, it will be the next uh, next part of my presentation.